Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. Today we're looking at software, specifically photo AI, and what's the best way to process images, specifically raw file editing or working through the Photoshop filter, right after this. What I wanted to look at in today's video was What's the best way to process images in photo AI? And this is probably also true, by the way, of Denoise. Uh, I have switched and I'm using photo AI more and more for a few reasons. One, I think the program just integrates a little bit better and it's a little bit easier on my workflow. If I need to do some sharpening, I can do it right there. And the noise reduction seems to be as good as Denoise. I will also say it looks like the engineers are putting a lot of time and energy into photo AI. It's almost like every time I go to photo AI, there's an update there. So I think this is the future of Topaz Labs. But by the way, I am an affiliate. I'll put links down below. I'm also an ambassador for them. Uh, so every time you open their screen, look, you might see one of my images pop up depending on the software that you're using for them. Uh, but in this video, I just wanted to look at this. I've gotten a few questions about this. Should I open it? Should I open my raw image into photo AI first? Or should I open it into Photoshop or Lightroom? But in this case, we're gonna talk about Photoshop. Should I open it in Photoshop and then use the camera raw um, editor there and the filter for Topaz AI? So that's what we're gonna compare directly. I'm gonna, everything on this channel, I try to be practical. It, it, it's gonna get a little technical on Photoshop for this one, but just around layers. If you understand layers, you should follow this video along with no problem. If you don't understand layers, it might seem a little complex and I would absolutely encourage you most photographers own the Lightroom, the Adobe package for photographers, which is Lightroom and Photoshop. There are other software programs out there you can use to edit. These aren't the only ones. But uh, regardless of what program you're using, understanding layers as a general concept is going to make your workflow very, very powerful. So I would encourage you to go out and learn how to use layers and masks right away if you don't already know that. Okay, so for today's video, uh, let me open up Photo AI. And you can see it's opened right now as the standalone. And what I'm going to do here, I, I just have the my Windows Explorer opened here. So these are the images I'm working with. I was shooting uh, yesterday with common mergansers. And I had a really nice look. Very late in the day. ISO 3200. So I wasn't hopeful. My shutter speeds were getting pretty low at the end of the day. But I did get an image that I liked. Uh, and, and I wanted to find one that had some noise in it. So this image turned out to be a pretty good one. And all I'm doing is dragging it. You can see me how easy this is. I just drag it right in here. It's going to run its autopilot setting. It's going to determine what it thinks should be the correct noise reduction and or if it needs sharpening. Now, it did not recommend sharpening for this one. It's going to view it at 100%. And you can change that down here in the bottom. You'll see a little uh, magnifying glass there. And you could see the raw file doesn't look great in terms of noise. There's a lot of color noise in this. But I'm just going to trust Photo AI to make its adjustments. Can you do this other ways? Absolutely. You could do it in Photoshop. You could do it in Lightroom. There's a lot of ways to do noise reduction. But I am finding that Topaz in general does an exceptional job. And you could see here, when you look at the left to the right, it did an exceptional job cleaning this up. The settings that it looked at was 9 and 39 on the strength. 30 on the detail. And do notice there's normal and strong. I'm going to reference this again. So do notice there's two different settings for normal and strong. Did a really nice job. And it did it evenly. Always check through the image. So you're always going to scan up into corners. And anywhere where there's changes, you notice this top left is dark. You want to get into those changes of colors and patterns and see if, whether it's this noise reduction or the any program that you're using, but that it's even, that it got rid of it everywhere. Every now and then noise reduction programs will will leave noise in certain parts of the image. I'll show you an example of that in a minute. I'm going to make this strength 10 just because I like even numbers. So now what I'm going to do is save this. And the way this works is I brought it into the raw file editor or the, the Topaz Photo AI raw editor. It made its adjustments. Now it's going to export it. So it's creating a new file. And here's the key. There's a good and bad to this. I'm going to show you the good. Here's the bad. It creates a destructive edit meaning that all of this noise reduction is embedded in the file that it's about to create. It's going to then export it. I'll, I'll click right here, save image. You'll see how. I can choose the location. I always choose the original file. And you can choose the format. I would not recommend exporting this as a JPEG. I would recommend exporting this as a DNG file. DNG is a raw file format, so you're keeping all of the original information in terms of, of data 
but you have made that noise reduction change. You have altered the image destructively. It is changed. And I'm going to save that. You could use a TIFF file. I'll show you TIFF files in a minute. Uh, TIFF file is an uncompressed file format. It's a lot more data than a JPEG um, and similar to DNG files. I don't want to get into the weeds on file formats. DNG is universal, meaning that it's kind of the standard for raw files. And each camera manufacturer has a specific file format for their camera body. So if you use a Nikon or Canon or Olympus, they all have proprietary raw files, which require your program to be able to read it. With Adobe and Topaz, they read all of the common file formats for raw files. Everybody reads DNG files because those are the standard universal files. And again, now it's sending that file over back, in my case, to Windows Explorer, the original uh, destination. But I want to show you the difference when I did it this way versus when I did it, and I can close the window now because it's done, versus when I did it in Photoshop. So now what I've done is I'm going to open up Photoshop. I've already brought some of these images in. This is the raw file brought directly into Photoshop. No changes, not even a tweak in Camera Raw or Lightroom, just original file. So you can see the noise pattern there. All right, you see it's pretty pretty healthy amount of noise there. What I wanted to do is see if I ran this through Photoshop, Photo AI in Photoshop through the filter menu, do I get a different result? The answer, short answer is yes. So now the, the question is which one works better? I'm gonna duplicate the layer. I always keep the original layer underneath. I'll show you why in a minute. I go to the filter menu, I go down to Topaz Labs and I select Photo AI. It's that easy. I love the workflow here. Part of the reason I choose to do it through Photoshop in this filter menu is the ease of use. It's just for me, very, very simple. Uh, for the sake of time, I may speed a little bit of this up or edit it out, but I'm gonna open it here. You'll see it, it's already gonna populate the image. I'm gonna use the exact same settings as I did with the raw file. And you are gonna notice one difference because I've already ran this a couple times. I played around with a few images. I got similar results uh, with each image in that it is not the same as doing it in the raw file format directly into Photo AI. So remove noise, it, it's asking for a strength of 13. I'll leave it because I'm just letting it default. And what I wanna show you is if I zoom in a little bit, on this one, so we'll go into 200%. It's gonna re-render. Each time I move this image, it's just gonna have to re-render. The noise pattern was pretty good. It left a little bit of noise. It's hard to see, but right in here, just a little bit, not too bad. And then underneath, a little bit right under the bill. So I actually did this two ways. I did it on the normal setting and I exported it back to Photoshop. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And then I changed it to the strong setting. And I did play around with this a little bit. The strong setting removed the, the noise universally. So I got better noise reduction on the strong setting. The strong setting may give you more, a, a slightly more artifacting, slight, slight little bit more artifacting, but you really have to pixel peep to find it. Now, when I save this to Photoshop, it's just gonna quickly process it and send it back at, on that new layer that I had created. And again, I know if, if you understand Photoshop layers, you're with me. If you're struggling with Photoshop layers or you don't understand it, this could be a little bit of a challenge. But if you've, if you've selected this video, the, the, the whole point of the video was to compare Photoshop's filter versus the Topaz Photo AI uh, direct raw conversion. So here's what it looks like. Now I took the liberty of a couple other file layers. So I, I took the raw and I converted it to a TIFF and then I ran it directly into Photo AI. Interesting. Those results were absolutely identical to the way I did it here. So the only thing that looked different, and I'll show you that really quick for comparison. The only thing that looked different was this, this DNG file that got exported. Let me first show you when I ran it through. This is the original. When I ran it through the first filter, you could see that little bit of noise that was left down here. This was on the normal mode. So this is Photoshop's filter, normal mode. When I did the TIFF file, you can't even tell when I click this from one to the other. That's the TIFF, that's the Photoshop. They are indiscernible. And that means I converted the original raw file to a TIFF. I brought the TIFF file into Photo AI, and then I created a layer from that. It looked identical 
to Photoshop. So I'm actually just going to eliminate that from conversation because I saw no advantage or difference. And it was more of a curiosity. I saw no difference or advantage when I created a TIFF file and worked from the TIFF file. TIFF file is just an uncompressed format. All right. Now, I didn't get the best result on the regular normal uh, method in Photoshop. I had to change that photo AI setting to strong. So let's take a look at what that looked like. So there's the strong. You could see pretty even noise reduction through the whole image. This was the regular or the normal. Oops, let me get rid of that. Every now and then I click something I don't want to. There we go. So that's the normal and that's the strong. You can see right down along the bottom there, um, right under the bill, the strong did a better job of removing it. But the real point is now let's compare the best result I got, which was strong versus that photo AI raw conversion. Again, I'm going to make this point a couple times. That raw conversion is destructive and it changed the file and exported it to a new raw format. There's no nothing bad with that. DNG files are great to work with but it did change some of the information. And again, the changes are destructive. So here's what the raw file looked like through the DNG when it was converted to a DNG. Notice there's a, an added saturation and maybe a slight color shift. It also looks like maybe the dynamic range changed a little bit. So here's the, the regular run through photo AI. So this is processed. And here's the noise reduction that occurred when I did it the other way. And which one is better? This actually looks better. The DNG file looks better. And it's because it added some saturation. When I ran the raw file through Photoshop and then put it through the filter for the plugin Photo AI, it did not change color. There it is right there. So let's watch the original. There's the original. Photo AI cleaned it up, but did not change color. Just removed the noise. The raw file conversion actually change the color a little bit. Now, it to my eye, it actually looks pretty good. This is probably about what I would have done. So it did some work for me, but it also took the control away. Remember, this is a destructive edit. So what's, what's the better result and which one's easier to do? Well, if I use this method, the raw file conversion, and I want to bring it into Photoshop later, I have to bring it in, export it back, and then bring it back to Photoshop again. So it's a longer process for sure. So there's extra steps in the workflow. So it's easier to do it in the Photoshop method. So this is the Photoshop method. Use the filter menu, create a duplicate layer, bring it right in. Which one got a better result? Let's zoom into about, oh gosh, this is 500%. So we'll see every flaw in this. You can see there's a just a, a tiny bit of noise left in this, but not much. In the raw file, it did make that background smoother. It also around the edges may have created a little bit more artifacting that I don't think you would see naked eye, but you only see when it's zoomed in. So this is the, I'll, I'll just call this photo AI raw. And this is photo AI Photoshop. Photo AI raw, you could see the difference. Photo AI Photoshop. The raw cleaned up more noise, but did it destructively. And if it's too strong, which this one feels a little too strong to me, there's more work involved. Now, I did a, a video on my Topaz Labs workflow. So in my personal workflow, and the reason that I like using these layers so much is it gives you the ability to use opacity. And opacity means you're just turning down the visibility of one layer and allowing the layers underneath it to show through. And the way, the way we would typically do this, let's say I've done my Photoshop, uh, I've run it through Photo AI in Photoshop, I get the result. Maybe it feels a little too strong. I'm just going to go down to opacity in the layer that I've done the noise reduction on. And I'm just going to pull it down, typically between like 80 and 90%. That lets a little bit of the original grain show back through, which I actually don't mind at all. Uh, I don't typically like these glassy, glassy images that have removed all noise. Now, let me go up to the photo roll. And again, let's go to the photo roll. You see the color shift right there when I'm zoomed in, right? There's that color shift. Did a really nice job in noise reduction, though. It removed really, really um, universally removed the noise. Just said a tiny little bit of artifacting that's indiscernible to the eye. Every noise reduction program is going to do this to some extent. So when I get to this photo AI, 
layer, because I want to pull a little bit of it back, I would do the same thing. I would just dial down the opacity and I actually got a really good result when I did this. So at 85%, I took that really smooth image that was processed in photo raw, brought a little bit of the grain back from the original image. And I really, really liked the result. So bottom line, let me zoom out. Which one, which one do I like better? Really, really tough to say. Uh, the photo AI raw did a really nice job. It added some saturation. So the, the pros were, it did a really good job of noise reduction. Maybe, maybe too good for me because it left it pretty smooth. Didn't lose a lot of details. That's one thing I love about Topaz products is it, it does the noise reduction, but it recognizes the subject and it doesn't, it doesn't make the subject soft. Um, so I liked that part of it. What I didn't like is it's a longer process. I have to bring it in, export it to that raw DNG file, and then bring it back into Photoshop to make my workflow work. So the, the Photoshop method, just doing it all through Photoshop is an easier workflow for me. I will continue to do it that way. I would encourage you just to test it, maybe try it out. See if in your workflow, it's better. If you are strictly doing noise reduction and converting it to a JPEG and sending it out to the web, I, I don't think that's the best way to do it. I, I do think you're better off experimenting in Photoshop and, and cleaning it up a little bit in Photoshop. And if you haven't tried this approach with layers yet, uh, take a look at it. If you're, if you're struggling with this concept completely, uh, take a look at my Patreon page where I, I show you how to use this stuff. And I actually just teach specific editing for bird photography. I don't deal with anything else unless I find a relevant Photoshop editing process that applies to bird photography. So feel free to check that out as well. So it's a pretty easy process to do. You can actually test this on your own. You can, you know, do the, the raw import and bring it over to Photoshop, do the Photoshop filter comparison, see what it looks like on your files. Maybe it'll look different, but uh, I'm guessing you'll get similar results. Let me know down in the comments if you have played around with this before or, you know, what your preference is here. Did you find the video helpful? Um, let me know. As always, thanks for your support on the channel, and I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.